Yeah, so we've been working really hard during spring. Er, no, it's the fall, isn't it? Okay, sorry. <laughs> Nothing can prepare you for the torture that lies ahead. What are we gonna do? Win? Uh, sorry that we're just better at this. Yeah. Between the lines. All right, Laura, starting off with you, the men's soccer team went 2-0 over the past week with a 1-0 win over Adrian and a 2-0 win over Hope, moving them to 9-3-1 on the season. What do you think their chances are of making the four-team conference tournament at the end of the year? I think the chances on making that tournament is very, very high. They have a lot of good captain leadership from Kyle Kansman to Austin Gabri. So I think they are in a very good place being second place in the conference currently. So things are looking good for the soccer team. Awesome. Same question for you. I would agree. I think they have a very good chance. If you look at Kyle Kansman in particular, um, he's a defensive player, but he's scored three times this season. So you just have, they've got very well-rounded players. I think their chances of making the tournament are very good. All right, Laura, could you give us a quick preview of what the upcoming season for Cheer and Stunt is looking like? Um, so we've been working really hard during the fall. We had um, a lot of conditioning, a lot of lifting, and just really working hard as a team, kind of getting that new bond. We have a lot of good leaders graduating last year, and people are stepping up, and I think we have a really good shot of returning to Stunt Nationals, being a really top contender for NCAA Nationals. So all is good for the Cheer and Stunt team coming up. You mentioned some people stepping up. Uh, anybody specific for each team that you'd like to mention? Our captains are stepping up in a positive way. We have a junior captain who's Dominique Burke, and she's doing a great job kind of getting from the underclassman to an upperclassman level and really leading the team in a positive way. So. And Mia, could you give us a preview on the basketball team this upcoming season? Um, well, preseason has been going very well. We've been lifting every day, well, most days during the weekend. We have basketball class twice a week, um, open gyms have uh, been going really well. I think that it's hopefully going to be a very good season. The seniors are definitely showing the underclassmen what it's like to be a collegiate athlete. Hopefully the season will go pretty well. Um, I think the captains have been very helpful with getting everybody motivated. Kenny, Sophie, and Tara do a really good job of leading and leading by example, I think. So um, I think that'll definitely make an impact on the team. What do you think the outlook for the volleyball team is for the rest of the season? Well, volleyball just reached their halfway point in their season, so they're about to replay everyone in their conference. Um, they just played Hope, so they're done facing Hope again. I think they have a lot of teams that they can beat coming up soon, getting into five sets, and um, I think they have a good chance of finishing strong. They just got to keep their positive energy uh, moving through the next games. Same question for you, Mia. Um, I think if they play strong, play together, They've got a very good chance. I mean, if you look at Dakota Pelock, she's got all those triple doubles. If she keeps playing like that, then I think um, they've got a very good chance. So, yeah, we'll see how it goes. We can only hope for the best, you know. All right, so we got a new segment called How To, and today we're doing How To Dribble a Basketball. I'm Mia, and we got Katie and Laura here. They're going to be your demonstrators. So we got three steps to dribble a ball. Your first step is going to be pick up the basketball. Our next step, that's kind of an easy one, you're going to drop the ball on the ground. And then smack the ball with your fingertips. Okay guys, so the next how-to we're gonna do is how to do a cartwheel. So the first step in how to do a cartwheel, you're gonna start as a starfish, okay? And then next in your brain, you're gonna think hand-hand, foot-foot. And lastly, you're gonna throw your body over and best of luck to you guys. Praying for you. All right guys, it's time. Oh, yeah. I don't even know how to like start. <laughs> that was great. Good job. And up next we have our special guest, Katie Nicewinder, and she's gonna teach us how to juggle a golf ball. Alright, so first you're gonna scoop up the ball with a club. Then you're gonna keep the face of the club flat. And then you're gonna bounce the ball up and down, keeping it flat on the club. Let's see it guys. Hold on. Oh. <laughs> Can you 
can't even control the ball without. Can I just like throw it on the club? There you go. Hey. <laughs> that is a bad club. Also, why this isn't fair for you guys. But... And thank you. That was how to. So, how is Mary's volleyball season going so far? Um, I think it's going well. I think a lot of us seniors coming into this year were thinking, you know, this is my last go round at volleyball. Um, I'll never play competitively in the collegiate realm again. Uh, the kind of the only involvement I'll have is coaching if any of us so choose to do that in the future. Um, so, we're kind of in it for having the fun of it. Um, and the season's been a lot of fun for all of us. And, I know that we're kind of enjoying the camaraderie and our last time out on the court, and I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot. So how does this mix with having a brand new coach? Do you know what I mean? Like you had yeah. probably a different feel. How, what's that like in your final season? Um, I think a big part of having a new coach is just buying in um, whatever philosophy they come in with, and especially it being our last year and not having a lot of time to implement it. She even came in right at the end of our spring season. It's a lot about just buying it immediately, um, taking everything that she says with a grain of salt or, you know, I'm going to implement this right away and kind of keeping yourself accountable as well as your teammates accountable to that so that, you know, we can implement our new defensive system or um, if we have new offensive plays we want to run and things like that. It's important um, with a new coach to get that going right away, especially when we were in such a time crunch. Yeah. So you mentioned the buy-in. I'm kind of interested in that. So what is Alex Lasia's buy-in? Like, what is she selling that you're trying, that you have to buy? Um, we changed up our defense a little bit, um, just as far as where our base positioning is. And all of our movements are into the court. Um, so we're not starting in and moving out any to simplify movements. All our movements are into the court. Our middle back is about two, three feet from the end line, and um, the wings are both on the outer perimeters. And so all of our movements are about into the court, and that's not what we had been preached for three years. Um, so we had to make that adjustment right away. So kind of that was something that we all had to adjust to. What are you majoring in here? Certified professional accounting. Okay. Counting. What's the day of Mary consist of? Uh, by the grace of our professors, I only have class Tuesday, Thursday. Um, just my required classes, that's how they fell. Um, so Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I was mostly doing homework and work for admissions here and there. Um, practices, and then if we leave for games, that kind of stuff. What do you yeah. do for admissions? I give tours. Tours? For admissions, yeah and then you know, meal prep and stuff, I live off campus. And then Tuesday, Thursday, I have class almost all day. I have an hour break in there, and then I go straight to practice, or sometimes have to leave class early for whatever game we have if it's away. And homework cool. after everything at night. What do you do on the weekends here for fun? We haven't had an off weekend yet. Oh, that's right. Or we had one. Um, and on that weekend, I kind of just laid low, didn't do much of anything because it was our one weekend off where we weren't mm -hmm. in a tour bus for four hours, five hours plus. Yeah, Sundays we all kind of go to church together. If we're in town, we'll get together and go to St. Mary's down the street as a team. Well, what are you looking forward to in your last semester, senior year? You won't be playing volleyball, obviously. What are you looking forward to? Mm -hmm. um, looking forward to a little bit more free time. Um, now that we don't have the volleyball commi commitments, especially with spring season, um, I'm looking to you know get a little bit more traveling in before I do start a full-time position. Um, kind of do things that I threw on the back burner for volleyball. Um, now that I'll, I'll be able to do, I, you can, when spring comes, go camping and stuff. Mm -hmm. I know that's not a lot of stuff that people want to do, but it's what I want to do. So kind of having that free time and getting to spend those last, you know, that last quality semester with people that have, you know, in four years you were complete strangers and in four years you've become best friends and, you know, people you can't imagine your life without. Um, so spending a lot more quality time with them and uh, whether it be the volleyball team, my sorority sisters, people in my major, because um, this is the last time we'll all be together. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of my teammates are getting the feels. <laughs> Already, so. <laughs> I can only imagine. All right, so we'd like to thank Mary for coming on and talking with us today. A little bit about volleyball and a little bit about herself. Thanks, Mary. Thanks for having me.
We're gonna segue into another segment now. This is segment is called Hot Seat with Me. <laughs> is there like an odd ritual within the team that maybe people don't know about, like at practice or before matches? Question. Um, we always do a team prayer before games. So you said you're an accounting major. Who's your favorite professor on campus? Ooh. I would have to say one of my favorite professors on campus would be Dr. Cameron. Who's, uh, who's that one person on campus that like, when you immediately see, it brightens your day? I think the person that, if I see them on campus, it, I could be having a terrible day and it make it better, is Jordan Wilson. Is there a person on campus that like, if you see it, immediately makes your day worse? There's just people that you see and they're always got like that look on their face no matter what, like it, we could be at an awesome like hyped up basketball game and we're all having a great time and that person's still in the corner like, and I feel like that just drags everybody down. Who kind of like embodies what, what the team is about? Jillian Young. Um, she's gone through a lot of adversity in her time here as an Alma Scott and this is only her second full season healthy. Um, through torn ACLs and um, kind of other injuries that aren't as serious as ACLs. Uh, but she's pushed through. Um, it, she could have done the way of, uh, I've, you know, I've torn in both ACLs, I, I'm done, and I don't think anybody would blame her. Um, I know that I personally don't know if I would want to come back from that either, but um, despite all of that adversity against her, she has come back and is playing and she's so full and although she is old technically um, she is old uh, she still has the passion of the young freshman who's naive and just blinded by oh, I love college volleyball I, I can be a part of this and it's it's nice to see that heart and soul in somebody that is a senior what keeps you going I mean what what kind of keeps you on the right track of you know even though it's d3 and you know, it's, it's not necessarily as serious as D1 or D2. I mean, what, what keeps you coming back every day despite, you know, the setbacks that you guys have had? We're here because we're passionate about it. Um, we're passionate about volleyball. We're passionate about our teammates, the camaraderie, um, the love for Alma College. I think if I didn't love Alma as much as I do, or as much as I do, um, you know, it, it might be a different story, but I, I love the girls. I love the team. I love the school. And, uh, I think that's what keeps all of us going. Do you have a favorite flavor of ice cream? Chocolate Moose Tracks. Uh, what's your favorite movie? I really like Top Gun. <laughs> Who do you bicker with the most on the team? Um, I think Katie Bush and I always throw shade at each other, but it's for fun. And I, I've had people ask me, like, do you talk through the net to other teams? And I've never really heard of that before. Like, if I, it's an opposing team, but when we're playing at practice, yeah, we'll talk through the net to each other and just give each other crap. What's one interesting fact about Mary? Well, my birthmark. I, not a lot of, I don't really notice it unless people ask me about it, but I was born with it and it stayed the same size the whole time I've grown. So it used to be like upper bicep to almost onto my hand and now it's the same size and it just looks like a burn. Uh, this has been The Hot Seat with Mary Rieger. Thank you for joining in Between the Lines this week and I hope you have a great week. Between the lines. <laughs>